Good morning, church. It is a glorious day to be here with you all this morning. My name is Michael Colleen. I'm our associate pastor here, working with students and mission, and uh, welcome to Shepherd of the Hills. If today's your first time, I'm so glad you're here. I want you to feel at home and be at ease. The people around you aren't weird. They just love this place a lot. And so if you're brand new, just say hello, and they will, they will envelop you with, your, with their love. And so we want you to, be, we want you to feel welcome. As Beth said, we are in a series right now called Worth a Thousand Words. It's our visual uh, journey through Lent, and we're, we're using keywords and images that um, will help you, help you in your journey to, toward Easter. And it's a powerful, powerful journey, because when you see images, they evoke thousands of words. They evoke thoughts. They, they bring back memories. And today, what we're working on is a word called wonder. Wonder. It's an amazing, amazing word. It's, it's a word that's, that's kind of guided my ministry and every, everything that I've done here and before, it's all been about encountering the wonder of God's grace, of his mercy, and uh, just, just being wowed by it. So this morning I want to invite you to journey with me into wonder. Would you pray with me please? May we never lose our wonder. Holy and Father, Holy Father God, may we never lose our wonder. May, may we be wide-eyed and mystified. May we be just like a child, staring at the beauty of your grace, of your mercy, of your hope of your salvation. May we never lose our wonder. It's in your son's name we pray, amen. As always, I am a very simple, down-to-earth, easy-to-remember preacher, so if there's only one thing you're gonna remember, you can write it down right now and you can just go to sleep for the next 15 to 18 minutes. Are you ready? Get your pencils out. This is the one thing I want you to remember. Real wonder Real wonder makes you brave. Real wonder makes you brave. There's no doubt in my mind about this. Real wonder makes you brave. And just because you're an adult doesn't mean you can't have a childlike faith. Just because you're an adult doesn't mean you can't have a childlike faith. Now, I didn't say a childish faith. I said a childlike faith. And real wonder is gonna make you brave. I remember when I was growing up in Southern California, I grew up, my family was pretty much dirt poor, and uh, we had four people living in a one-bedroom uh, apartment, uh, upstairs apartment, and there were lots of rules in my family, and there's certain things you weren't allowed to get, get to or to, to mess with or play with, but I would always, always find ways around some of those rules. And so I remember really vividly, I have this, this memory that, that, uh, that, that lives alive and well in my heart, and I think a lot of you all have the same memory with, uh, with me, in that when I would get a little bored, and I'd start to say, well, what can I do? I would go into the closet of, of my house, and I'd find a towel. And I'd take this towel, and I'd wrap it around my neck, and I'd make a cape. If you've made a cape, be honest, please raise your hand. All you cape makers, thank you, thank you. See, now after you make your cape, you have to tie it on real good. Now my neck is much bigger, and if I remember correctly, the, the cape would hit the ground, but it doesn't hit the ground anymore because I must be much taller. And I would take my cape and I would run as fast as I could because the goal was to get the cape to fly behind you just like Superman. It was awesome. It was the best. It was the greatest. Because with this cape, if you tried hard enough, you could fly. With this cape, you could fight crime. You could jump over the houses of the neighborhood. With this cape, anything was possible. But then, something happens. Something awful happens. The reality of life breaks in and destroys the wonder. It destroys 
the possibility. It steals the dream. I think one of the most critical and crucial issues that we face as men and women of faith today is that we've lost our wonder. We've lost the ability to look and see the the majesty of God at work right here in our midst, in our lives every single day. it's, It's like we just got old and then we locked up our childlike faith. Because right now, we live back in that real world, that, that world that's filled with rules, it's filled with work, it's filled with homework and, and school, and it doesn't feel like there's room to stop and wonder. We've actually become cultural clones of one another. Think about that. From, from the child with a cape to a cultural clone, I think we've lost our astonishment in what God has done, what God is doing, and what God will do. And and when we lose our wonder, when we've taken our wonder out out of the equation of our faith, what happens is the good news becomes just okay news. Um, what happens when we lose our wonder about having a relationship with Christ, it's, it becomes no longer life-changing and life-giving, but a relationship with God is simply life-enhancing. When we lose our wonder, Jesus doesn't change us at all. See, I, I, as I read Scripture, I see when people encounter Christ that he changes them from where they were to something amazing, to wild-eyed radicals who are willing to follow him wherever he goes at whatever cost it's going to take. He changes them from nice, safe people who fit in to people who are willing to make the biggest difference. Or does he? I think once you've experienced God's wonder, you can't go back. You you, you just can't go back. And and I want to invite you to to meet a friend of mine. Her name is Morgan Reeves. Morgan, would you come on up here for a second? And Morgan's going to tell you a little bit about how God's wonder has ruined her life. (laughs) Um, But for the best life possible. Morgan, you're a senior in high school, right? Yes, I am. At which high school? Austin High School. Woohoo! Maroons represent. Yeah, I know. Okay, uh, you're a senior in high school. You're also um, a member of the student ministry here. Yes, I am. And what's that place called? True Student Ministries. It's over in the student lounge. Excellent. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. And uh, Come you're check also it out. you're also a leader as well. I am. I have. I lead uh, sixth grade girls, and this is my second year leading them, and they're beautiful and they're wonderful. And some of you are the parents in here, and I love your kids so much. Yeah. Are those kids filled with wonder? They are. They actually, (laughs) they really like to push limits and ask tough questions, and they really just love to have the deep conversations, and that always manages to surprise me because they're so young, and their faith is so rich. Now, you have something that's happening in your life that God's done something in your life that's kind of changed your direction. Tell us a little bit about that. Okay, so for those of you who haven't ever heard of the World Race, it's a mission organization founded by Seth Barnes. Uh, The gap year program that I have recently committed to and that God has called me on is a nine-month mission trip. It goes to three different countries, which I just found out last week is Guatemala, Malaysia, and Botswana, where I will be spending three months in each of these countries serving the people, doing mission work, and living amongst real and raw community. The mission organization really focuses on breaking the idea that we all have to fit into the American dream, that we all don't have to reach out, that we all don't have to live radically, like that idea that is imposed upon us, like conformity almost, it really breaks that and it asks you to step out and be a part of something bigger that God is playing in the life of the world and in the life of all of his children. Wow. You are doing something that not very many people are doing, Mm -hmm. which is for some reason God has said, Morgan, I want you to go Mm -hmm. and do what I want you to do. I want you to go tell people about me. I want you to go learn about other people and then share, mm-hmm. share his word. Um, how, how are you going to be able to make that happen? I'm going to be able to make that happen 
mostly by the support of his children, God will use all the people surrounding my life to make sure that I can go out into the world and that I can expand the kingdom and that I can work to demonstrate love to all of his people. A few ways that that's happened is mostly through prayer. I need, I'm asking everyone to please pray for me on my journey uh, to go and live amongst God's people and to go and be exposure. Some of these people in the places that I'm going to is highly influenced by other religion. So we go into remote villages and what we do is just to share God's word to his children that have never heard it before. We reach all ages. And so doing this, it obviously costs some money and I know that God will provide for my mission. And so a few ways that um, you can find out more about my organization is I actually have a blog and it's called www.morganreeves, which is my name, R-E-E-V-E-S for anybody who doesn't know dottheworldrace.org, um, and that's where I keep up all my blogs, even while I'm out on the race in all the different countries. I keep up blogs about what God is doing in my life, how he's broken into my life, how he has transformed how I view myself and what I say about myself and how, who I identify myself with, which is Jesus Christ, and um, basically there is ways that it offers uh, support. There's support financially, support prayer, all different ways that you can support and be a part of my walk with God and my faith walk as I try to seek out all the wonder that he has put here on this earth because I can hear him call my name to do so. So, Thank yeah. you, Morgan. Thank you for answering God's call. Thank you for being led by wonder. <laughs> now, now, before you step down... If people want to know more about Morgan's uh, call and the mission, she'll be available after the service. But right now, I'm going to pray for her. Would you pray with me? Holy and gracious God, I thank you so much for the way you still speak, the way you still call people, the way we invite them into the world to, to be your representatives, to be your ambassadors, to, to share your love, to share your joy. And God, I ask that your spirit right now would dwell deeper in this young woman than it ever has before, that it would give her a sense of peace and confidence, that it would, give her, that it would fill her with a bravery that she might be able to go to all these places, trusting and knowing you in every step and every breath that she takes. Amen. Thank you, Morgan. So as we continue on, our scripture today is Psalm, one, uh, Psalm 17, verses 1 through 8. We're going to put that on screen. We're going to read it. If you wouldn't mind, read along with me. I'm going to put my glasses on so I can read this with you. Hear me, Lord. My plea is just. Listen to my cry. Hear my prayer. It does not rise from deceitful lips. Let my vindication come from you. May your eyes see what is right. Through, though you probe my heart, though you examine me at night and test me, you will find that I have planned no evil. My mouth has not transgressed. Though people tried to bribe me, I have kept myself from the ways of the violent through what your lips have commanded. My steps have held to your path my feet have not stumbled. I call on you, my God, for you will answer me. Turn your ear to me and hear my prayer. Show me the wonders of your great love. You who save by your right hand those who take refuge in you from their foes. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings from the wicked who are out to destroy me, from my mortal enemies who surround me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Here you have a psalm of King David. It's most likely while he's being tracked by Saul, hunted down. Um, he's in camp, and he knows that it's getting bad. It doesn't look good. And in this, this prayer, he asks God to do some simple things before he actually says his request. He, he says, hear me. Listen to me, God. I, I need you to pay attention to me. And then he says, examine me. Look at my life. Look at the things that I'm doing. Look at how I live. I, I've not strayed from your path. I don't say bad words. I haven't taken bribes. I've not become, well, I haven't compromised. And then he shares his prayer request. And if this could be all of our prayers, it's amazing. He says, show me your wonders. Show me the wonders of your love. He's asking God 
to fill him with something that, that's just so amazing. Show me the wonders of your love. His saving love, his protecting love. And then he says, keep me. Protect me, put me under your wing. And keep me as the apple of your eye. That's the heart of his prayer, is show me and keep me. I think it's interesting that it's in this moment of crisis that this man of faith, it's in this moment of crisis that this man of faith turns instead of trusting logic, instead of trusting his armies, instead of trusting all the skills, he says, God, I need you. Show me how big your love is. Protect me. Hold me. Keep me. Because I think David knows something that maybe we all need to know. That, that with God, all things are possible. That with God, there is no victory that is too far away. And with God, we can withstand even the toughest of struggles. And with wonder, you become brave. Brave because you know what fills you. With wonder, you become brave, just like that little boy with a cape who could run around the neighborhood and fight crime because wonder knows no limits. Because when you wonder, you begin to ask God for bigger things. You begin to ask God to change your world. You begin to, you begin to listen to God in different ways because he may be calling you on a mission that will change the world. May we never lose our wonder. Just for a moment, I want you to, 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 to remember the eyes that you had when you were a child. Some of you guys, you're, you're already very, very much children. That's awesome. But for some of us who are older, eyes of a child, oh, that's a long time ago. Think back. The eyes of a child has so many firsts. The first time you, you step in snow. The first time you see snow when it comes down. Oh, man, that's so cool. There, there are first smiles, first steps, first words, first laugh. Let, let those eyes be yours just for a moment longer. Let wonder be alive in your eyes just for a moment more. Now I want you to remember that moment when rejection or cry or pain broke that wonder and you decided to grow up. You, you traded innocence for experience. You, you traded worlds of make-believe for real worlds of monotony. Where you traded the awesome wonders of God for God's absolute waste of grace. Church, I want to let you know something. Today, we can reclaim it. Today, we can reclaim the wonder that God has for us all. And it's not just in how we see, but it's in how we live. Because just like David, as he prayed, he prayed, God, hear me. God, examine me. God, show me. God will, if we do pray those same prayers, God, hear me. God, examine me. God, show me. He will show us his wonders. He will provide us with new eyes to see. He will give us new ears to hear, a new mouth to speak. He will bind up and restore that which has been broken. And for a lot of us, that's our wonder. See, we will be reminded of, of God's great wonder when we start having the heart that he wants us to have. When we go where he calls us to go, when we love who he calls us to love, when we show the grace that he calls us to show grace to. I remember the first time my son had a balloon. It was so cool. He was like, wow, check this out. And the balloon itself was a blast, right? Because you could play with it, it could bounce it, and when you blew it up, it made noise, and then you could let it go, and it would boop, it'd go all over the place. But after he got a balloon, the next thing was a helium-filled balloon. Now, this was filled with helium at some point. <laughs> And, and once you see a healing balloon, or you see the first time a kid sees a balloon, the kid goes, oh my gosh, it's floating. 
it magically just stays up in the air by itself. It's incredible. And it's just all wonders. And once you've had a floating balloon, you can't go back to a regular old balloon, can you? It's like, it's like oh, that balloon's stupid. <laughs> But the, the, so that's, that's awesome. So when a kid sees a balloon like this, oh, it's just, they're just filled with wonder. But the problem with this kind of balloon is that, as you guys know, it leaks. And so eventually it does fall. And I think that's where we are. We leak. God gives us this, this, this whole blast of wonder through the grace of his son, through the eyes that he gives us, and then we leak. But there's still good news, folks. There's really good news because, because there's one more type of balloon. That's a Mylar balloon, baby. <laughs> okay? That thing's going to stay inflated for months. And when it does start to leak, you can refill it. See, I think we refill our wonder every time we go back to God's Word. Every time we open our hearts in prayer. Every time we are authentic May we never lose our wonder. May we never lose our wonder. Would you pray with me, please? And as I pray, I want, you to, I want your eyes to be on screen as I pray. There's some questions I want you to be thinking about. May we never lose our wonder. Wide-eyed and mystified, may we be just like a child staring at the beauty of the King. May we never lose our wonder. May we never lose our wonder. Wide-eyed and mystified, may we be just like a child staring at the beauty of our King. May we never lose our wonder. Wide-eyed and mystified, may we be just like a child staring at the beauty of our King. Amen.